In this video, we are going to cover the five reasons that you will fail to implement Zoho without the help of a Zoho implementation partner. Now, it's kind of funny to me when people fail to successfully implement Zoho, and then they are shocked when the system setup is sloppy and inadequate. And I just sit there like, well, of course, of course it is. If you aren't a Zoho expert, why on earth would you have the ability to implement Zoho properly? Zoho One isn't built once it's bought. There's nothing magical about buying Zoho One because Zoho One is only as good as its implementation. And if there's one thing in business you don't want to do wrong, it's your technology setup because your tech stack setup makes or breaks your business. Not to mention, you will waste so much money and time from implementing Zoho wrong that you'll just wish you had bought a Rolodex. Now, I'm Drew Brockbank. I'm an official Zoho Consulting Partner, and I'm the owner of Brockbank Consulting. Zoho is changing fast and it's difficult to learn, so don't forget to like and subscribe for free Zoho training and helpful Zoho updates. But it's even harder to get the most out of Zoho. So if you'd like to unlock Zoho's full potential for your business, book a free consultation to get the elite Zoho help that you will need. I'm gonna show you something called Johari's window. Now, full transparency in TMI, I actually learned this in therapy, but this model especially relates to setting up software and having to partner with people. Okay, so let's start with the first quadrant, right? There's four different quadrants inside of the Johari window model. So the first one is what's known to self and then what's known to others. Okay, so for you, I want you to think of known to self, that's you, right? and then known to others, that's a Zoho implementation partner. Okay, so what you know and what a Zoho implementation partner knows is called the open area or arena, right? And you can think of this as like documented requirement. So something, let's say we were working together and something that you want to accomplish with Zoho and something that I understand how to do. But here's the thing, I'm a white belt in your organization and you're a white belt in Zoho, but I'm a black belt in Zoho and you should be a black belt in understanding your organization. So the better that you can communicate your objectives, your requirements and processes, and the better you can facilitate, and the better a Zoho implementation partner can facilitate the transfer of your information over to them, the better you can build a system, right? So the more information you can move here to the open area or arena, the better, okay? But here's things that aren't known to you, right? Your blind spot is Zoho, right? Whereas as a Zoho implementation partner, they aren't blind to these things, but because you're blind to these things, you need to partner with someone. And let me tell you, there is so many blind spots in Zoho that you just wouldn't understand unless you've implemented Zoho day in and day out for years and done that for over a hundred organizations. You are blind to so much. There's so much you don't know that you don't know. You can't be blamed for that, but being humble enough to realize that and hire someone to get something set up right, right off the bat is in your best self interest. Okay. So that's, what's not known to self. And that is, um, what's known to others, right? So that would be Zoho implementation expertise blind spot. What a Zoho implementation partner knows and what you don't know. Then you've got this third quadrant here, right? And this is the hidden area or facade. Okay. So this isn't known to a Zoho implementation expert. Um, but it is known to you. And this is what I would call a lot of times convenient assumptions. Um, so it's assumptions that a client or yourself may make when you're engaging with the Zoho implementation partner. So it's something that you're just conveniently assuming that the Zoho implementation partner just knows, right? And you haven't explained it. It hasn't been said explicitly, but you're like, oh, they probably already know that about the organization. Oh, they probably know that to do Zoho. I don't have to mention it. I'm just going to conveniently assume that it's going to be a working system. So for example, one thing that happens a lot within a consulting engagement or an implementation project is a client will throw around a term like working system. And what might be a working system for you might be a broken system for somebody else. And that is a term that can have multiple meanings. And so it's very important that when you're in a consulting engagement or you're working with anyone, especially a Zoho implementation partner, that you move information from the hidden area or facade, you move that information into the open arena. And then it's important, and that's why I do a lot of these videos, 
that as a Zoho implementation partner myself and a Zoho consultant, I move information from the blind spot into the open area. Because the more information you can get into this top left quadrant, the better system you are going to be able to implement for a client. Okay, the better system you're gonna be able to build. So the more information, the better. The more relevant information, I should say, the better. Okay, then you have things that aren't known to yourself and then that aren't known to a Zoho implementation partner or Zoho consultant. That's just what we call the unknown. And here's the thing, you can know how much a Zoho implementation partner or consultant knows by their content. And that's why I do so much content. I wanna show, hey, there um, is the least amount of possible in comparison to other Zoho implementation partners um, in this unknown quadrant, right? Um, I have a lot in your blind spot that I can help move over to the open arena for you. And hopefully, since you're a black belt in your organization, you have a lot in the hidden area of facade that you can move into the open arena. And then the open arena is represented by requirements. We're not gonna go too much into requirements here, but it's really just written statements on what Zoho is supposed to do for your organization. And it's like the first creation of your system. First, you create it on paper, and then you actually go implement it. But you wanna make sure you create it on paper first so that you have a plan because it saves time and money um, in terms of it saves how much time you have to do to actually execute and implement the system. If you have it written out first, the implementation goes so much faster. That's something so many people skip. They're like, oh, I don't wanna do my homework. I don't wanna have to go ahead and write all these things down that Drew said. If you don't do that, you will fail to implement Zoho and you'll have nothing to look at as a basis for success. And if you don't have requirements written first and you implement the system, um, then it will always be relative as far as did we were we successful in implementing Zoho? Some people, if you're an organization of one, it'll just be based on your feelings. But if you have multiple stakeholders in the organization, some people might say, ah, Zoho's terrible. And some people might say, no, this is perfect. This is exactly what we needed. It all depends on their requirements. So you wanna gather those requirements and gathering requirements is what we call discovery. And discovery is moving again, information from the hidden area of facade, which is things that you know that a Zoho implementation expert or Zoho consultant doesn't know, uh, moving that into the open arena and then moving information that the consultant has or implementation expert has into the open arena so that you understand the strategy of how things are gonna be built out. Okay, so that's quite a rant, but that is the truth on how these things work, right? When you work with anyone, that model applies. It's all about building trust, um, getting information together, making that objective so that you can just check the box and say, we wanna verify, were we successful? Well, we set out to achieve A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and we were able to check the box on those things, therefore we can consider this successful, okay? And you may think to yourself, well, I'm gonna build a flowchart, I'm gonna do so much better than requirements, I'm gonna build a huge flowchart. Well, guess what? Even at NASA, when they build these highly technical systems, um, they first create their systems as requirements, technical requirements. They write them out, they don't draw them out in a visual diagram. So the temptation is to use a diagram because it looks nice and people are excited when they build them. And you can do that, but it's information, uh, it's not information dense, or in other words, it doesn't have enough information. It's too low resolution to truly build a system on top of. So you gotta understand that because so many people come to me with a flowchart and they're like, okay, Drew, go ahead and implement this for me. And I look at them and I say, um, only you can understand how this was created and what this means. And it's terrible for facilitation of transfer, or in other words, it's terrible at transferring what you intend to do with a system. It's easy to create. Um, it's almost impossible to build a system off of. And so it's not good practice to document your technical requirements in even BPMN 2.0. Um, I even have better uh, documentation for process documentation that you can refer to, and I, I actually have that in different videos. But let's move on to the next one. So first is Johari's window. The second is this crazy idea um, that you must build a plane as you fly it, as they say. Um, that is terrible strategy and it's very expensive and waste time. It is so much better if you take Zoho before you roll it out to your team, um, especially when you're in a free trial. The best way to do it is to get Zoho, um, get the Zoho one free trial, and then during the free trial, have a Zoho implementation partner implement your system during the free trial. So you haven't even paid for it yet, it's implemented. There's certain things if you try to, to try to do, you have to upgrade, but then you can just do one user license during the implementation phase. And then you get everything built to the best you can right off the bat based on the requirements that you have, based on the best practices of Zoho setup, and then put people into the system because then they'll actually adopt it. 
um, the chances that they'll adopt it just skyrocket if you create, if you implement Zoho correctly right off the bat, okay? But there's this notion that you just need to get going as fast as you can, we'll worry about it later, it's someone else's problem, um, if we start using it, it will fix itself, it will implement itself. That is not true. Trying to build the plane as you fly it is probably one of the worst things that you can do because it will take 10 times longer to build things than it would have if you just built it while it was on the ground before you lift it off, okay? So build the plane in the hangar. Don't build it as you fly it. That's a great way to crash and burn your entire Zoho implementation project. And so many people do that. Now you may be thinking to yourself, well, Drew, we already... We've already implemented Zoho and it's a, it's not a great implementation, but we want to use it according to best practices. You can, I'm just saying it's much more difficult now because you're not starting with a blank sheet of paper. Um, you're starting with things, uh, all these different options and configurations, and you may have baked in bad processes into your system that you have to um, unbreak, okay? Or you have to, um, you have to change. And so you're starting in like the negative. You're not on square one, you're on square negative 10. If you have set up Zoho poorly. And that's why I get a lot of these projects where people come to me and they say, Drew, we just wanna start over. We wanna do it correctly. Um, we know we did this incorrectly. And I'm like, that is a really difficult project. It's something that can be done. But my point is it's so much easier if you just get things set up right off the bat correctly. Okay, so don't build the plane as you fly it. And don't say that. That is just a way of saying, hey, we're gonna justify wasting tons of money and time because we're just gonna build the plane as we fly. And it's like, yeah, that's a terrible idea. And then a lot of people just think that's how everything's supposed to go. They're like, that's, there's no other way to do it. There is a better way to do it. And I have um, a masterclass if you wanna see in depth what that means to set things up correctly right off the bat. It's um, my uh, automate your entire business with Zoho um, automation masterclass. So you can check that out, it's on YouTube, it's completely free. Okay, upstream, downstream, reason number three. It's worth getting Zoho built right right off the bat. Okay, so mention this a little bit, but think about it this way. In business, if you solve a problem upstream in a process, there's positive downstream effects. If you neglect a problem upstream in a process, there's negative downstream effects. So for example, let's say that I want to track which of my marketing efforts is making me money. Well, what I would do is I'd put UTM parameters in the links for let's say my YouTube videos and my LinkedIn posts so I could see what's doing better, YouTube or LinkedIn. Now, if I do that correctly off the bat, I get positive downstream effects. I get to see how much revenue I've generated based on how many YouTube videos I've created and what specific YouTube videos are bringing in revenue. I can get those insights because I did something correctly upstream, now I get the positive downstream effects. However, Let's say the opposite. Let's say I wanted to, after a year of running my business, I wanted to say, hey, I'm gonna start doubling down on the marketing efforts um, that are working for me. Well, if I didn't put my UTM parameters in all the links, I wouldn't have any of those insights. So because I neglected something upstream, even if it was out of ignorance, just because I didn't know, now there's negative downstream effects where I can't measure what's actually producing results. I can't measure what, what deals came from what sources. And this happens so much. Organizations will come to me and they'll say, Drew, I wanna now set these things up. And I'm like, well, you failed to implement Zoho correctly. And so now you have to pay the price. You don't have any of that data and there's no way of retroactively going to get it. And so many people are about, we wanna collect all the data that we can. Well, I mean, after three years, there's no way of retroactively filling all of your data up. So the point I'm trying to get across is there's a lot of positive effects downstream of the process by heavily investing in correctly developing Zoho. Because either way you do have to pay for the setup, it's just if you're gonna get anything out of it. Because a lot of people, they'll even pay tens of thousands of dollars to someone who's not a true expert and they'll get screwed over in their system. That's why it's important for you to vet properly the Zoho implementation partner that you're going to go with because so many self-proclaimed experts are really just salespeople hoping to pass you off to someone who's completely technical and doesn't understand your organization. And so the idea here is it is worth uh, front loading the effort in Zoho Implementation Expert because there's tons of downstream benefits for you. Um, so it's in your best self interest to, uh, while the plane is in the hangar, develop Zoho really well so that you get the best possible V1 for your team and you collect all the data that you need for reporting down the line, but also you give helpful automations and structure to the system so people actually use it instead of thinking, oh, another tool that I have to learn and that I'm gonna hate using.
So that's upstream, downstream. Okay. Here's the other reason. You will fail to implement Zoho yourself because you just aren't an expert. And I don't say that because I think you're dumb. I don't say that because I think you can't become a Zoho expert. I'm just thinking if you were a Zoho expert, you probably wouldn't be doing what you're doing. You'd probably do Zoho consulting because that'd be your expertise. And even if you view Zoho at a different company, it's one, I mean, there's levels to this, right? There's being an end user, which is knowing how to use the interface, enter information. And even that can be difficult, but that's the easiest, right? And then a level up from that would be an administrator, not only knowing how to use the system, but also knowing how to configure and customize the system so that it can look the way that you want and it can function the way that you want. Okay, that's being an administrator. So you got end user administrator, and then you've got a consultant or implementation expert. That's something, that's somebody um, like myself that doesn't just know how to use the system as an end user, Zoho CRM, other applications as an end user, but also knows how to configure, customize, and how to lay out a strategy of these are the best things that you can do in order to get the best version one and then keep the ball rolling so you continually build a system that drives revenue for the organization. Or maybe that's not even your goal. Maybe your goal is just to manage things so that um, deals or opportunities don't fall through the cracks or that you make sure your operations look nice and that you streamline your processes and you automate as much as you can. So that's a Zoho consultant or expert, someone who's seen you know, over a hundred different organizations, tens, um, dozens and dozens of systems and can give you insight that way, instead of it taking you three years to get the most out of Zoho, you can get it in three weeks and then enjoy all those automations and all those um, benefits instead of taking you know years to realize them. So that's the idea is you're not gonna be able to do this yourself, not because you're dumb, but because it's so different um, to be an end user versus an administrator versus an implementation expert. I mean, just as one very practical reason as well, kind of sub reason, is uh, you might know how to use the system as an administrator and configure and customize, but that doesn't mean you know how to implement or import your data or migrate your data, right? You might have a database with over a million records just because you know how to administer the system doesn't mean you know how to build an entity relationship diagram, show how the information is going to tie together. Um, not that you really need to know that as a client, by the way, but it's really important for a consultant to understand that or an implementation expert to know that, and then know how to normalize data and make it database ready and then bring it into a system. So there's all these things that are really critical to understand that you probably just don't understand because you don't do this every single day. And if you do it every day, I want you to call me because I'd hire you. Okay, so prescription without diagnosis is malpractice. Okay, so this kind of is a sub point, I would say, um, in that you're not gonna be able to implement Zoho because you aren't an expert, but it's something important to understand about um, finding the right implementation partner for you is this principle that if you uh, provide a prescription or a plan or a strategy without properly diagnosing what you're looking to achieve, you are going to fail to implement Zoho. Um, because again, it's prescription without diagnosis is malpractice. So if you come in the door, it's like, okay, let's hit the ground running. I'm gonna do for you what I've done for everybody else. It's like, that's incorrect strategy. Now, initially, there are things that have to be done in Zoho that you're gonna to have to do eventually that are good to get right right off the bat that, you, that um, personally, I can do for everyone that would make everyone's life 10 times better inside of Zoho. But over the long term, you do want to support your individual business processes and even within the same industry from business to business in the same industry. Processes are drastically different. And so I've worked with multiple software companies, um, even in the same space, I have completely different processes and that's, that's normal. Um, most organizations do things uh, very differently and um, the fruit or the uh, benefit of Zoho really comes to how closely you can support best practices in your organization. So you wanna make sure that you support those the best that you can and you wanna make sure that you have proper discovery, that there's a discovery period where you can collect all of the details um, or that you can put on paper all the details for what you understand about the uh, system. You can think back to the Johari, um, Johari's window. You wanna move as much as you can from what you know that your Zoho implementation partner doesn't know so that they can craft their strategy and their plan around those items. And if you don't do that, it is always going to be this, uh, he said, she said, um, blame game where you're shifting blame from the implementation from yourself to the implementation partner and from the implementation partner back to you the way that you come to agreement on how to build a system is you move what you know over to the requirements 
And so implementation partner reframes those things so that you have a shared understanding of what's going to be accomplished. And you must do that or you're going to fail. And if you feel that people are trying to rush that process, um, cause you can't do it quickly. Um, but if they try to skip over that process, I should say, um, you can immediately know that that's malpractice, right? Prescription without diagnosis is malpractice in everything, right? If you went into the doctors and you said my knee hurts and they gave you, uh, what is it? Vitakin or like a, a painkiller. You'd be like, that's malpractice. You didn't, you didn't even ask what was going on with my knee. If I like bumped it in a spore, if I like bumped it on the stairs, you didn't even ask, uh, you could have a shattered kneecap and they would need to do something else. But the point is it's in every, um, area of life, prescription with diagnosis is malpractice, right? It pays to have a deep diagnosis of your organization, what's going on before implementing Zoho. Cause then even a real Zoho implementation partner will tell you that this just doesn't make sense for your organization. Like what you're trying to accomplish it doesn't even make sense for you to have an implementation partner. You can do this yourself. Um, or you can be told, Hey, this is going to take a lot more resources than you're thinking. So it's much better to do that initially. Okay, guys. So hopefully this gives you a better understanding of why a Zoho implementation partner shouldn't be optional for anyone who wants to take a Zoho implementation seriously. You should definitely consult an expert so you can get a clear strategy on how to move forward. Now, if you are looking for more in-depth and structured training, I have the perfect solution for you. Go to my website, drewbrockbank.com. You'll see a Z training section and you get Z training completely for free. Just throw in your first name, last name, and email. You will be sent an email with access to Z training where you'll learn how to become a power user in Zoho um, in only five days. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I will catch you in the next one.